Hey, hey, welcome back. Thank you so much for continuing on your fifth grade science series journey. We are still in life sciences. Today we'll start talking about ecosystems and we'll talk about producers, consumers, and decomposers, and even look at some food chains and food webs. So it's gonna be fun. Let's do it. Science rocks. Okie doke, get out that science notebook, get ready to take notes and draw pictures as you follow along. We're going to talk more about life sciences. So copy down these 11 vocab words, pretty easy, only 11. They go in ABC order like this. And remember to come back later and create your own definitions of these words. So go ahead and pause it if you need to finish writing down the vocab words. All right, so let's talk about recycling matter in ecosystems. So the Earth's materials can be recycled in many ways. Water, air, and materials in the soil are all examples of types of matter that cycle through Earth's ecosystems. So all living things go through basic life cycles that contain these stages, growing, reproducing, to dying, to decaying. So at any time, some organisms in a given environment are growing. Others are reproducing and others are dying. So some organisms have already died and they are decaying. So as the cycle of life progresses from one step to the next, matter and energy flow through living and non-living parts of an ecosystem. All right, let's talk a little bit more about this cycling of matter through ecosystems. So producers, such as a plant, provide the way that energy from the sun enters an ecosystem. All right, they also begin the cycle of matter. So at the beginning of the cycle, producers convert water, air, and materials from the soil into sugars and other things, like remember the oxygen gas that it produces. So the producers then use those materials to build structures such as leaves and stems and roots for the plant. Okay, so that's producers. They get their energy straight from the sun and they start the cycle of matter, things like plants. And then you have consumers. Consumers are like animals that eat producers or other consumers, okay? So consumers have to consume things, eat things to get their energy, okay? Um, they transform the matter they obtain into building materials for their own bodies. So the matter needed for a consumer to grow larger comes from the organisms they consume as food. All right, and then you have decomposers like this mushroom here. They help keep the environment clean and help to recycle Earth's materials by breaking down those wastes and remains of dead plants and animals. So through this process, matter from these materials is converted back to water and nutrients, which are in the form of these small, simple particles. So these nutrients are then returned to the soil and to the atmosphere, where producers can use them to begin to um, do some new um, matter cycling, okay? So uh, things like worms, bacteria, some insects, and fungi are examples of decomposers. All right, let's look at this food web. So in one of the feeding relationships, or in one of the food chains shown in this food web, all right, we're going to look at this feeding relationship, this food chain right here. Matter from the grass becomes incorporated into the grasshopper, all right, which is transferred to the frog and finally to the copperhead snake. So when the copperhead dies, its matter will be broken down by decomposers into smaller particles which can be released into the atmosphere or soil and eventually these particles will be used by other organisms to build their body structures. All right, guys, make sure to take the time to watch these two videos, one about decomposers and one about food webs. And as you're watching, just make sure to take more notes. 
Okie doke, let's do some practice questions. Number one, which of the following describes what is taking place in the process shown here? All right, so it has plant leaves decay and form compost, and then earthworm eats compost, and then ants eat earthworm, and then ants decay, and then new plants begin to grow. So look that over, pause it, and see what you think. All right, so there are many ways in which the earth recycles naturally. So the carbon cycle, the water cycle, the rock cycle, those are all examples of recycling in nature. So this is a specific example of how matter and energy can cycle through an ecosystem. So the leaves decay to form compost, which provides food for bacteria. Worms eat the bacteria. Worms are food for insects like, like ants. And the ants die and decay, enriching the soil, and new plants grow. So if we look at our answer choices, we'll go with A, matter and energy are cycling through an ecosystem. Number two, this is a food chain in a pond. What does the water beetle depend on for food? What does the water beetle depend on for food? So when you're reading a food chain, you'll read it um, from the left to right in this case. So the energy from the water lily is transferred to the water beetle. And the energy from the water beetle is transferred to the fish. Okay, because the fish eats the water beetle and the water beetle eats the water lily. So the water beetle depends on the water lily for food. So that's D. All right, here is another cluster example of some questions that you'll see. So it says, study the information, then answer questions three through five. So three, four, and five are all going to be about this, okay? So let's look at this information. The drawing shows some plants and animals that live in the Black Kettle National Grassland in southwestern Oklahoma. Some students wanted to make a model to show how matter moves through this grassland. The students had learned that the movement of matter allows plants and animals in the grassland to get nutrients or food. If the plants and animals do not get the nutrients or food they need, they cannot survive. So, by making the model, the students could predict how well plants and animals would survive if events such as fire or drought happened in this ecosystem. Okay, so here's their picture of different producers and consumers. Okay, so number three is going to be about that information. The students also learned what some of the organisms eat. Okay, remember the picture previously just showed the producers and consumers. It did not show like who eats what. So prairie chickens eat native grasses and coyotes eat prairie chickens. Native grasses are eaten by antelope and antelope are eaten by coyotes. So which model over here, we've got A, B, C, and D, which model shows how matter moves among these four grassland organisms. All right, so look at what you've been told over here and see which one matches up, okay? So if we look at C, it shows that the native grasses are eaten by both the antelope and the prairie, ki prairie chicken. So if we look in our question, Prairie chickens eat native grasses, yes, and native grasses are eaten by antelope, yes, okay? In this model of C, it's saying that the energy from the antelope and or prairie chicken is transferred to the coyote because the coyote can eat an antelope or a prairie chicken, okay? So look back. Coyotes eat prairie chickens, yes, and antelope are eaten by coyotes. Yes. Okay, so in order to pick out that yes, C is our answer, you could go through each one of the models, 
look at your information and see which one matches up. Make sure the arrows are going in the correct way because you notice that A and C are pretty similar, okay, but the arrows are going the incorrect way in A, okay. So the energy from the grasses is transferred to the antelope or the prairie chicken because they both can eat the grasses. The energy from the antelope and prairie chicken is transferred to the coyote because the coyote can eat an antelope or prairie chicken. Number four, what can the students add to their model? Okay, this was C, the one we chose, to show that matter also moves between organisms in the environment. So what can the students add to this to show that matter also moves between organisms in the environment? So pause it and see what you think. All right, the other thing we talked about when we were looking at food chains and food webs were decomposers, okay? Remember, decomposers because they break down the dead plants and animals. So we'll go with D. All right, number five, last one. Which set of events should the students model here also include to show how matter moves in an ecosystem? All right, so let's look at these. A, plants take up air and water to make food. Yes, okay. Animals eat plants. Yes. Animals breathe out air. Yes, okay. So, so far we're looking at A. B, plants release food as wastes. No, we are never saying that plants release food as waste. It's not a waste, okay. C, animals take in air and water to make food. Animals take in air and water to make food. No, that's a plant, so no. D, animals released wastes into air. Hmm, well, we breathe out carbon dioxide, but it's not a waste. And then animals breathe in water. No. All right. So go through each one. They're kind of missing some commas there that I try to add in. But A makes the most sense. Plants take up air and water to make food. Remember in photosynthesis, plants use the carbon dioxide in the air and they need to be watered um, to make food, which was that sugar. Okay. And then animals can eat plants. Yes. And animals breathe out air. <sighs> Remember, we breathe out that carbon dioxide that carbon dioxide, okay? And remember, we suck in um, oxygen that's released by the plant. So A is our best answer choice. Okay, after you have fully mastered this topic, you should be able to create a project, a presentation, an experiment, a model, okay? To let your teacher know that you can develop a model, to describe the movement of matter among plants, animals, decomposers, and the environment. So I challenge you to do that. Good luck.